more thing. Yeah, it's time for one more thing, our, our ever popular growing uh, segment where we talk uh, about uh, what's going on in high school football, not just here but abroad. Um, and there always seems to be one more thing to talk about. Uh, but the first thing before one more thing, I got a St. Paul fan, uh, Nick Rodriguez, who urged us to turn the helmet from the side to the forward so that they could see the, the actual wow, sword wow, here. So, glad they're watching over at St. Paul. Yeah, and then they went out and lost on Friday yeah. night to Pericles. All right, fair enough. Anyways, um, let's get right into this. We have a little bit of breaking news as of uh, Tuesday morning here. Uh, Freddie able to confirm that Whittier Christian is canceling its game this week, but not canceling the season. What do you know, Freddie? Well, I just got a, a, a text uh, or, or an email from Roland Esslinger, the athletic director over there, who said he will follow up with me later to give me more details. But uh, this isn't a situation I know on social media last night when Adelanto said that Whittier Christian was forfeiting Friday's game. A lot of people assumed, like Marshall last week and like Blair a couple of years before them, that maybe they were canceling the season. You know, Whittier Christian's off to an old five start. Uh, they've been beaten up pretty good in their last four games. So, you know, when something like that happens and uh, you automatically start to think, is this the rest of the season? Uh, Mr. Essinger said, no, that's not the case, that they are not canceling the season. And he's going to follow up later. We'll have more details on exactly why they're forfeiting and where they go from here. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a strange development, obviously. But, yeah, it's the natural reaction that when somebody cancels a game like this, you start to think, you know, the program's teetering and maybe they are, you know, headed toward canceling the season. Like you mentioned, Marshall last week canceled the remainder of its season. And, you know, it's something I mentioned in my column this week. This is a bad sign. Um, no matter if you're a fan of these teams or you're nowhere near these teams, it's a bad sign when teams in the area stop being able yeah. to at least finish a season. Um, there were some people that thought Marshall shouldn't have even started the season. Um, it's well, a bad sign, well, right? You, you hear more and more teams, Aram, that you know the enrollment is going down across the board, not just at those schools, at some of your bigger schools that you know, are even accustomed to winning. Uh, they're cutting out JV teams, and it's just yeah, right. and it's freshman teams. Frost soft teams. Uh, so the, right. and, and when you have teams like, like Marshall and like Blair and, and, and some of these teams, that, you know, Keppel, God bless them, they've lost something like 47 in a row, and they're still playing. No, yeah. seriously, James. Yeah, that's I mean, right. Yeah, yeah, that's, they're out that's, there that's a showing them, up yeah. every week, and that's tough when you lose that But punch. you wonder how long is that going to happen? Yeah, yeah. You know, that's uh, what I mean. It's a testament to them because when you start losing and you have low enrollment, it, it becomes a situation where sometimes it becomes dangerous for the players. Players, situations that they're put in physically, um, so yeah, I mean it's not it's it's not going away. I mean all that we hear about football and what's going on right now, uh, families more concerned, you know, yeah. safety concerns, participation. It's, it's just now. it's it's, it's going to keep happening. It's happening at the pop Warner yeah. levels where parents aren't putting uh, kids uh, in youth football as much as they have that in the past, too, yeah. and I think it's just a snowball effect. It, it's something I've been warning about now for years that you know um, you, you could just see the, the drop. Right. Your overall player participation and that basically my premise is that all public and private school programs are teetering some more than others obviously modern day is not teetering as much as a Whittier Christian but you know you look at what's happened this year at Charter Oak now I'm not going to say you know Charter Oak's you know in any kind of trouble but all it takes is a certain coach to leave a different staff mass player exodus to other places and all of a sudden yeah. You can free fall down, and then participation becomes a problem. It's yeah. just not a good and environment it's not out just there the participation. right now. It's also, you know, you look at coaches in football who 10, 15 years ago, Aaron, every every coach was a teacher on campus and their first players every day. I, I'd say today, you know, it feels like 60 to 70% of your high school football coaches are walk-ons now. Yeah. And the turnover every, you know, every single year. I was just at the Northview game a couple of weeks ago against Dunn Lugo. And Coach Gano said, you know, when are you going to sit down and, and, and talk to us about the real story and, 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 and why we're retiring early and, and, and why, you know, this isn't going to last much longer for some of us who've been around a long time. And his whole point was it's becoming difficult, just them dealing with parents, them dealing with oh. the 24-7 uh, football season that, you know, I mean, 365 years. dealing with parents. I mean, you've got to coddle life. a lot of the kids. Yeah. A lot of the stars now got to be coddled and, you know, make sure that they don't leave because, you know, they're being sold something by a seven-on-seven -seven coach. There's all kinds of things that, that go yeah. into it now. And these coaches say, hey, you know, it's not worth my time anymore. But, you know, one more thing on, on that that note. You know, I, I, I heard from somebody, you know, who was at the um, Pasadena Poly Temple City JV game, Frost Soft game last week. 
Temple City, it's kind of what you said, you know, we're talking about coaches, excuse me, Temple City had one JV coach overall. That's just for the whole, you know, wow. Frost Soft thing. Now, I haven't confirmed whether that number's right, but I, I remember when I went to Temple City. Yeah, the soccer team was three coaches. Yeah, there were three freshman football coaches, you know, a, a head coach, two assistants. Um, there were three or four JV, and then the varsity staff had like eight, nine guys on it. I mean, you know, probably more than you even needed. And now the Frost Soft team is down to just one, reportedly, and it didn't go well for Temple City. Um, overall yeah. against Poly last weekend. So, and Temple City, you know, as we know, I mean, forget about my own little personal feelings. That was a powerhouse program. And yeah. now look where it is. Yeah. Um, anyways, moving on. Um, you know, the flip side of this coin is what's going to take place this week in a Fred, and, and a Kane Fred is dubbing, and other people are dubbing the national championship. One more um, thing. Yeah, one more thing. Modern Day is playing uh, IMG Academy uh, on Friday in a game that's going to be televised by Prime Ticket. A lot of people are looking at it. I, I've even gotten tweets already about the point spread, which I guess is IMG Academy minus four. Hmm. So it's 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 very big here. Minus and four. Eric Sondheimer, um, the venerable Eric Sondheimer, wrote a column um, this week that talked about you know um, what maybe what what sect of high school football fan you're in. There's the the people that maybe like this. Um, this sort of style of, of football program, and then there's the old school people um, that that think this is what's ruining the game, yeah. the way these two programs are operated. I think Sandy, uh, uh, you know, mentioned that you know IMG Academy is is basically uh, an academy, a sports academy first, not a school. They have out of state players, modern day, you know, tons of transfers. Um, this is these are things that I mentioned in my column that'll be coming out this week. Um, what do you think, Freddie? I mean, personally, I don't like that this game and this style of high school sports or high school football is being glorified the way it will be, but I understand this is a yeah. business. Well, I think for, you know, for people who watch high school football, you, you, you look at modern day right now, uh, there's only two games really this year that you've got to think about. When they get in the uh, Division One championship and they play St. John Bosco, who is actually... We'll see them in who's, league. Who's, yeah, they will see them in league. Sure, league see them again. Yeah. Those are the games they're looking at, and this game against IMG because they're so far ahead of the other teams in the division, it's not even fun. When you when you look at when you look at what St. John Bosco, I think what they did to Chaminade last week, Chaminade a team that was pretty good last year. When you look at modern day and what they did to Bishop Awan earlier in the season, these aren't even fun games. I mean they're tearing apart other division one teams uh, that are supposed to at least be able to compete with them. But but, but sometimes this looks like, you know, South Hills taking on Gladstone. And that's what they they've But that would be all right by me because South Hills hasn't gotten its players, you I'm know, hasn't the gotten... sidedness Well, yeah, the games. lopsidedness, but I mean, you know, that this is kind of the problem, though, is that we're getting to that lopsidedness because modern day has now just become a football business, and, 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 and they are reloading at a rate that high school programs, number one, it's hard to believe all of that's legal by CIF rules, but hey, these kids, most of them are, well, are eligible. Just like last week you talked about there's nothing going to stop offshore betting. Right. And nothing's going to stop what modern right. day and St. John Bosco right. is doing. That's what I said. They, and, and, you know, unless... This is a business. Unless there's some cap on how much financial assistance you can give to the players, which I don't think there is, then, you know, those are what we call scholarships. Those schools hand them out more than anyone. They're going to continue to get those guys... Um, and, and they've talked about changing the transfer rules where a one-time, uh, I remember last, last week they proposed one-time freshman or maybe we talked about, you know, you get one transfer per four years. They're still going to find a way to get him in there. Those, those guys are still going to go to modern day. They're still going to go to St. John Bosco. Um, you mentioned in past years, Aaron, that you think maybe there should be a national tournament for teams like modern day and Bosco. And a national out, division. Get them, yeah. yeah, national division and get them out of division yes, one. Yes, I agree. Uh, With myself. Two years ago, I laughed at that. Yeah. I actually think that's not that's not a that's bad a idea, idea anymore. The way these teams yeah. travel, it's not such a logistically bad idea either. I mean, yeah. just, just put Bishop uh, uh, Gorman, uh, IMG, modern day. If you want to just keep it to the West Coast and throw IMG out, Bishop Gorman, Folsom, um, uh, Jimmy, what's that big school up in Washington? Bellevue or yeah, something? Yep. Um, De La Salle is because, a monster Because, I, because I think money-wise, you can get eight teams in the country yeah. and say these are the best eight. The, you know, they're undefeated. They're ranked nationally in all these publications. I think you would draw a lot of interest from television, from fans. Yeah. You know, wherever you, you know, you have to decide where you're going to play those games and not unpack them because of the distances. But I also think it would be fine, you would say to those teams, 
just like you put teams in Division One and you move them up and down for whatever reason, you're saying, hey, you're, you've been so great that now you're in the national division. Right. And that's what you're competing for. It's a national title. There's probably there's huge, huge money in division that. One titles. There's probably and huge money in make that. Those, I think it'll make the rest of Division One fun. Because right now it's not fun. To me, Division One is is the least fun division to watch. Of course it is. Because you it's are the only the, division, like you said, you already know yeah. who's going to be in the final. It's the NBA. You know, every other division, <laughs> you can't say that. You it's really the can. NBA, Fred. Yeah. I, I know that hurts you. Maybe maybe it's not the NBA going forward, but it's the NBA of the last five years. You know it was going to be LeBron against the Warriors or the Spurs or whatever it might be. And, you know, or last well, I, I think this is even more of the case than that. Yeah, but the problem is this is high school. That's that's a business yeah. association a, a league. This is high school. Yeah. And this is why I've always, like I said, and even more so in recent years, had the affinity for the neighborhood teams, that Arroyo CIF championship team. Now, people could say Arroyo got you know guys in from other El Monte area schools. That's fine. The San Marino CIF championship team, where that was all homegrown guys. Um, I can even handle you know public school programs like a Charter Oak that gets in four or five transfers a year. That's fine. But when it's like modern day and it's every year, you know, you lose guys, and that's okay because 10, 11, 12 more studs come in. It just ruins it. And, yeah. and one more thing, Gardena's coach quoted in, in, in Sondheimer's column called modern day IMG West. So, I mean, you know, we all know what's going on. Yeah. It sucks. Um, so and it's just not in so basketball, same yeah. thing now because in basketball, they're loaded too every year. They're always yeah. in the mix. Not the same. It's not the same difference at the top, though. I, I, no, I, well, that's probably not true. Basketball, yeah, that's, yeah, that's know, five true. players, two guys, upsets happen. One more thing. Let's move on. Took a lot of heat this week. Aaron moving South Hills to to number one. Yes. I got some uh, interesting uh, messages on Twitter from Bishop Mott players, Bishop Mott people <laughs> in uh, St. Paul. Uh, was a little upset that they dropped from one all the way to number seven in the poll after last week's loss. Trying to make an argument that, hey, you know, you had us number one and look at some of those teams that you dropped us behind. We're better than those. Uh, what do you think? What, but, but, but Bishop Lamont people are calling to be task on is, hey, Freddie, you know that if Bishop Lamont played South Hills, <laughs> we beat South Hills. And, and it, it got to the point where I finally had to say, you know what, if, you, if you're right. If, if Bishop Lamont and South Hills were playing on Friday, and we were doing a drill on it, I would pick Bishop Lamont. But that doesn't mean that South Hills, who you pointed out on Twitter, through four games, has not allowed more than seven points in any game, deserves to be where they are right now in their quarter world. They are playing super well. And when you think of it, one of the teams they beat, was it Rancho Christian? Mm -hmm. Rancho Christian, which is a Division II team. Oh, last San Juan week, Hills. San Juan Hills, I'm sorry, San Juan Hills. Beat Tesoro last week. Previously undefeated Tesoro, who's ranked, who was ranked number five in Division II, ahead of uh, the team that Bishop Amat just beat Cathedral and some other teams. So it's, you know, yeah, would I pick Bishop Amat? I probably would. But South Hills is having one of those kind of years right now where I think they deserved their top spot. The question you need to ask, and I feel like I'm repeating this for the last 10 years, uh, is not who would win head to head. Uh, so much as who is doing better in its own division and its own league and that, you know, like I said before, own corner of the world. South Hills is undefeated. They play up in some games and done beautifully. They have some dominating numbers. They're number one in their division. And then you look at where Bishop Amat is in D1. They've lost two games on the field. Um, they're just not doing as well in their division as South Hills is yeah. doing in theirs. Zero chance of winning a so championship. That's it. And I, you know, would even say, you know, the same thing with Northview. That's the other team, in my opinion, that has a claim to number one. Um, them and I guess Lucerna as yeah. well. Um, those are the teams that have a claim to it. Yes, I know Amont would blow those teams out if they played, but Amont yeah. doesn't need to be looking at, you know, that. It would be used like a South Hills Gladstone example earlier today. I mean, why would South Hills yeah. ever say, well, we would destroy Gladstone? I mean, same thing. Alma, yeah. You don't need to worry about what you would do against South Hills. you got to worry about and, what and, you'll and, do against, you know, the Mission League. And what I like about South Hills right now, look, they're playing extremely well. Coach Mac Bechtel has them rolling. They, they really want to they, they really take the Valley by storm. The last two years, uh, this isn't, I'm not going to just source this. This is Coach Bechtel telling all of us oh, yeah. that they tried to schedule Bishop Mott the last two years 
and Coach Steve Haggerty said no. Now, yeah, but in, in all defense of Bishop Amat, okay. over the last 10, 15 years, we've all seen these games. Yes. When Charter Oak was great, and they wanted right. to challenge Bishop Amat, blowouts. Right. West Covina was pretty good, they wanted to challenge Bishop Amat, blowouts. Um, Bento's claim to fame is, Mere. while he was at Public Chino Hills, they beat Bishop Amat. He feels like you know he know he knows what the uh, the ingredients are for knocking them off. Uh, would it be a better game than those previous ones? Uh, maybe I don't know, but I understand the reasons right. that Bishop might want to take it. The How game I want to see next year, and here's another team that I hear has been ducking South Hills is Northview, and there's no reason for Northview to duck South Hills anymore. You well, just depends how far you want to turn back the clock. Yeah, I'm you know saying what right, I'm talking about, Jim. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about right now. Northview's a young team. James Amen is a, is a junior quarterback. They, those Thompson guys are underclassmen. Northview is gonna is great this year and gonna get better. South Hills is a team that's young. They got a young quarterback and some young players. That would be a super super game next year. Let's sign that contract because I think that's a game on a Saturday night. Whoever you want to play Saturday Saturday night? Saturday night because everyone's going to be there. I know you won't be there because Alabama or some Ohio State right. might be playing that night. Or Canelo might be boxing. Whatever. Okay, let, okay let, let's just let's play the game. Thursday night. That better, Aaron? Yes, Thursday absolutely. Night. Okay. <laughs> but what do you think, Jimmy? That game needs to be needs to be played. I'm, I put it together 10 years ago. What are you talking about? I mean, okay. I'm, I, put, I put the game together. I called up Jim Arianas, who was the coach at Northview at the time. We were both looking for, I think, a week three, a week four game. And I said, what better away game when it comes to district field? Yeah. Five minutes later, the contract was signed. Yeah. Okay. You know. Yeah. One more thing. I want to go back to, like, what you said about Haggerty. You know, Haggerty, and you mentioned this, he didn't turn down that game because he's scared of South Hills. Right. Exactly. He turned that game down because South Hills doesn't scare him enough. Yeah. That's, that's the I, I difference. I think South Hills before this year is right. the team that you Maybe say. going forward, Haggerty would say, okay, you know, you're not as incompetent as I thought. And, I, okay, we will play yeah. you, and we'll send a message. You, you, you could say right now that maybe South Hills is a better game uh, than Paramount that they had on this game. Might be, yeah, possibly. yeah. Maybe but who, place a game like you know, that. who could read the tea leaves, you know, and know right. that before the season? Okay, one more thing, Freddie, before we get out of here. Um, grass games. I, I don't think I could cover any more grass yeah, games. Yeah, yeah. It ruins me allergies-wise, man. Not going to I can't even get to the <laughs> I thought, you know, being far away from the field would help, but like the blow of the dust and, 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 the, and the grass, and maybe it'll get different when there's actual moisture on the field later. I don't know, man. It's like getting older or something. It ruins, it ruins like my whole weekend. I wake up Saturday with a headache, sneezing, whole thing. I, 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 and I, I, I was not a proponent of all these field turfs. I, I'm old school and like, yeah. the, like the grass, and, but uh, I don't know. I can't take and, it. And one more thing. Isn't Division 13... Getting more interesting by the week. Not only do you have undefeated Alhambra, now you've got Almani, uh, who looked really good against Rosemary last week. They have yeah. a prolific running back, uh, you know, on their team. And then you look at Ganesha, and Irby continues to shine. I just think these are three teams. I've never been so excited about the lowest division in football than I am this year. Yeah, well, that was what it was designed to do, um, that, and that should be interesting coming up. We've talked about this a lot. Um, contention runs deep there, and these teams are going to have to take care of business and lead just to get in and see where they match up um, when they're there. Um, and, and one more thing. You made a pretty big statement, Jimmy, about uh, Mir this week. You said they would finish fourth. In the Del Rio League. In the Valley Vista League? Valley Vista League? They're terrible. In the Valley Vista League? No, on the Valley Vista League. Yeah. yeah. You, so think. you think Mir would be behind San Dimas? Yep. The, the, way, the, way, the way they played Friday night. It was awful. The way they played, yeah. yeah. It was absolutely awful. I thought awful. Valley probably had something to do with that. They do, and Mir, Mir always has a mental freeze against Crescenta Valley. I, I talked about this last week I, uh, here. I talked about it on Twitter. This is the game where Mir always breaks your hearts. Too many, too many and so many seasons in the recent past. Mir has gone into this game with high expectations and so and so, and we match up well, and then they just poop the bed, and that's what happened. Now the thing is, Mir has to turn things around, get back to business. They're going to have to beat Arcadia now. Um, they're going to have to beat Burbank now. They're going to have to help for help uh, elsewhere in the league, um, which I don't think is going to come. I think CD's yeah. probably going to win this thing. But still, Mir can make the playoffs and, and, and you know be a danger in D9, right? Yeah, but I, but I do like the running back. Let me ask you this. So you know, yeah. One more thing. Yeah. One more thing. Charter Oak. You oh. know, we, had, we had mentioned, uh, you know, I, earlier in the year that they hadn't started 0-4. The last time was, I, I, I think, 2009. And they're 0-5 now. I, I would bet 
that since Lou Farrar has been there, maybe go back to Royal Oak, because oh, I don't know if they've ever started 0-5. We would have to go back yeah. and no one to seem to remember that. Now, can they pull a Monrovia, like Monrovia did in the Real Honda League, where they went 0-5 and they came back and won the Real Honda League? You look at the Hacienda right now, clearly South Hills is the number one team. And they don't play South Hills, Aaron, until the until Lit. week 10, last yep. game of the year. They open the Hacienda. They've got a week off now. They're on the bye week. Two weeks to get ready for West Covina. Yeah. A game you think would seemingly you know, end uh, the bleeding right now for them. They get their first win. And then they get Diamond Ranch. There's a game against Walnut, a game against Los Altos, who's now has lost mm -hmm. uh, three, three straight. Yeah. Do they have a chance, you think, to turn it around and get themselves into that final week playing for a championship? I would game? say the first thing Charter Oak, the coaches, the players, and even the parents need to do right now is get away from football. Uh, use this bye week to do something else. Go to Vegas, <laughs> fall in love, do do whatever you can. Go, go to a homecoming dance, get pregnant. I don't know. Just get away from football and we come back. That last come, yeah. Why? Get pregnant. Yeah. How are high school boys? Okay, 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 move on. Get to your okay, point. it's just I'm talking about the parents. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen. So uh, the thing is, is that they have to. Just get away from football, come back, yeah. and hope that, you know, the rumors on Twitter are true that they're going to supposedly be getting some guys um, uh, eligible after sit-out period. Uh, if that's true, if there's a couple aces up their sleeves eligibility-wise, that'll help. Yeah. I don't think it's, 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 the, um, it's the impossible task that some people think. But their offense just isn't scoring enough, and, it, and no matter how good your defense is, if you leave teams in the game because your offense is so bad, they will find enough points to beat you. That's kind of what's happened to CO the last couple weeks yeah. against Damian and Chino Hills. Um, Diamond Ranch, I don't think it's happening against them. South Hills, I really don't think it's happening against them. But, you know, Los Altos looks like a toss-up, and the other two games well, you mentioned, they game should be all right. Although, but as Jimmy will tell you in sports betting and college football betting, oh. um, yeah, just to kind of make this even worse, um, you don't trust bad teams. You know, you don't, you don't, you don't bet on them to, to have turnarounds. Um, and this is a team that's you know bad. Yeah, but this so. is Charter Oak. I mean, you wouldn't bet on that traditionally with teams that struggle every year. But this is Charter Oak, just like last year, Monrovia, who was zero and four. I think that was yeah. a team you could still bet on could well, turn around and league. Now, because the league's four free spots yeah, yeah. for them, and then a San Marino. But I, I think you're right about you know, or three free spots. I don't think the they're going to win. The, the Hacienda League, I think you look at South Hills' defense and Charter Oak's offense, oh. that, you know, they, they could shut them out that game. But I do think they have a chance to maybe turn around against those other four teams who've been good, but not South Hills good, and give themselves a chance at Week 10. You know, we'll find out. Yeah. That was the last um, thing. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Okay. You got one more thing? No, I don't have any one more thing. I, 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 I was just impressed that Northview made a sign for Freddie. Did you see the yeah. sign they made for yeah. Freddie on Saturday yeah. again? There's been about like 15 of those signs yeah. the last few Sad weeks. Sad you missing a championship game yeah. happened out there as they, they ran out a few years ago. You know, it's great. You know what I mean? It, it, it's just the passion in the San Diego yeah. Valley that people pay attention. They like rankings. They like what we... We say about them whether we were for against them. I'm I, sure they like it. I picked I, I picked against them. I think so much in the past, and you know they have, I have a sign that kind of leads my pro, uh, profile page. Yeah. Uh, well, Fred, you got it wrong from Northview, and this was a. Uh, I've been I've been praising them recently, I, and I think it's lots to praise, so, man. Um, so yeah, Northview, you deserve everything you're getting right now. You're the real deal. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a funky week this week, guys. Uh, a lot of teams on buys. Um, a lot of teams, uh, you know, playing their last non-league game. Next week, though, that's all going to change. Yeah. Everyone's going to be at the high stakes table. And you pointed it out too, Aaron. Next week is the Friday where the sit-out period guys become eligible, yeah, right. and that's one thing we're going to probably have to look at in, in next week's one more yeah. thing and who that impacts and, right. and, and how much. Right. You mean you mentioned Charter Oak? We'll find out. Could help them. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, that's all right. it. So that's it. Uh, everybody enjoyed this week's games, um, and we will be back with you uh, next week.